Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about design patterns and how to practice them. So let's get into it. So the question in question was a follow-up question on, well, my a previous design pattern video that I made. And the current question was, Frederick, I understand that it's hard for a junior developer to learn how to use a design pattern, but if you wanted to try, wouldn't a good approach be to learn the design pattern and then go out and try to find a problem where that design pattern fits? And the short answer is no, because that's literally making the mistake that learning a design pattern will force upon you. Let me explain. So. I took this question because I feel like it was a good follow-up question, but it also indicated that the person who watched the video didn't understand my message. And I'm sorry if that's because I didn't express myself clearly or if this is a hard thing to understand. Let me say, tell you what I wrote back to this person. I reversed the question and I said, how will you know if you have found a problem that the design pattern is a good fit for? How do you know if it's a good fit? I will argue to you that if you learn a design pattern and you start looking for a problem that fits very well in that design pattern, odds are that you will actually start to understand this, which is the, which is the problem. This is the problem. You will start to understand that, oh, this is not a perfect fit for my problem. And here is now, the key moment that differentiates a senior developer from a junior developer or at the, even a mid-level developer who is in a philosophy stage. Are you going to back away and realize that there's a simpler, easier solution or are you going to start tweaking the design pattern until it fits your use case? Now, most of the time, people will start tweaking at least in my experience, and this is the problem with design patterns, that's why it's so hard, because what you've done is that you have reversed the entire discovery process of what makes up a good solution. You have created the solution before you have understood and tried to solve the problem. You have used, it's like solution-driven development, everything's a driven development type of some, something these days, and this is exactly the problem. You have, it's the same problem when you deal with a, an architect, or some inventor or some person who invents a new library or creates a conceptual idea for how to solve something that has never been created by driving through a lot of obstacles in the real world. What they've done is they've just created a theoretical solution to a problem they, that, and, that, and now the challenge here be, for them becomes to Find a, situa find a way for that solution to work with a given problem. And that is completely the wrong way to go around it. What you should do if you want to re have really good solutions is to actually try to solve problems, to be problem or oriented rather than solution oriented. Because if you, if you are problem oriented, your solution will grow. And that is how a design pattern has been developed, by the by. Design pattern, where nobody sat down and said, oh, this is a really cool concept. Let's add that into a book of, book of standards and try to, uh, try to find problems uh, that are associated with this solution. The, it is the other way around. These design patterns have, been, have emerged because enough people have had the same problem over and over and solved it in a very, sim in a very similar way. By chance, some, in some cases, I suppose, but usually that's the way it goes. If you and I have problems that are very similar, you will find, and I've, seen, I've found myself many times look at tech talks and so forth and go, Wow, that is actually how I how, how I did it as well. Pretty cool. We didn't make a design pattern of it because we're not really there yet, but that's also, if you haven't thought about it, where best practices come from. Best practices can be developed in two ways. Either one guru sits down and says, hey, this is my personal workflow. It works really nice. Let's call that a standard or a best practice or enough of these people do it so that we actually see that, well, this is continuously creating good results for the implementers. 
and it's no different here. This is, uh, and that's why what I told the subscriber that if you want to learn a design pattern and if you want to understand it, I believe that it is all but impossible for you to do so by reading about the. You can read about the pattern. That's not a problem. But the second you start trying to find a problem that fits your pattern you are inevitably going to if, uh, going to be in this, this situation where you have to either tweak your solution or you're going to have to find a problem that is a perfect fit. Now, there's nothing wrong with tweaking, but the risk of you tweaking is that you may not have an underst a holistic understanding of how far you should tweak. And before you know it, you have invested quite a lot of time in trying to fi fit this problem into your solution, even instead of just backing away and saying that this is probably not a good fit. And that's why I asked that question, how will you know when you've had a good fit? I argue to you that as an inexperienced developer, you have no way of knowing because you don't know what you're looking for. You have absolutely no idea of what it means to write sustainable and well-made code and until you understand that you don't actually understand if and how to use a design pattern and that's probably a bit of a disappointment but what I'm practically telling you is that you have to have the experience to understand the holistic mindset around writing good software before you can correctly apply a design pattern because at the end of the day the design pattern is there to help you write good software. And unless you know what good software looks like, then this is, it's just a coding practice that you apply without understanding why. So what I want you to take away from this is that design patterns is a hard thing because the people who start using them or want to learn them or often people who don't have the background to actually apply them correctly. And I argue that in order for you to do this, you have to basically reach a master level programming skill level before you, before you can. The people who wrote these books, they are master programmers. They were master programmers when they wrote this. They have ye had years and years of experience of doing the same thing over and over. And they realized that these patterns actually fits into the sort of work we do over and over. And if you don't have that holistic understanding, it's very unlikely that you will be able to correctly apply these pr practices because you simply don't understand the problem that they are solving. And if you don't understand the problem, odds are much more likely that <clears throat> you will, with your fairly limited understanding of software development, try to apply something that is a solution to a problem but instead of understanding when to actually grab it and put it into implementation, you will try to find, as the subscriber was saying, a problem that this fits into. And that is completely, it's the wrong way to go about it. You need to solve the problem first and then understand that this solution is, the, or rather the solution that you have produced may not be ideal. Maybe there's somebody else who has a, has a problem, has a solution to this problem that is better. And that's the thing that you should do. You should be problem focused. Focus on trying to solve the problem your way. And then when you realize how you have solved it, then look and compare yourself to somebody else who, who solved the, the problem and figure out whether or not your solution is better or worse. And I promise you, if you continue that process long enough, you will actually invent the design pattern. I promise you, you will. Yes, it's just a matter of time. Have a great day.